my biggest thing I say on like interviews and recruitment and, and outside of recruitment, right, is focusing on me. Mm. I focus on me. I want to be a better person. I want to be happier. I want to be more fulfilled. I wanted to create in my mindset that I'm enjoying what I'm doing. Mm. Like just work, sleep, work, sleep is not enough for me. Welcome back to the show. This week, I was joined by Jamie Fraser, the CEO of the Interact Group. We last sat down three years ago. (laughs) Back then, he was a team of 15 people turning over nine million pounds. Since then, he's been busy. And over the last three years, the Interact Group has opened offices in Miami, New York, the Netherlands, and they've grown to 100 plus people. And last year, they turned over 65 million pounds. Ever since getting to know Jamie three plus years ago, the belief, the passion he had for building a platform that breeds high performance, excellence was evident. However, he's had to do a lot of self-work, like we all have to do, personal development, become the person that you need to become. And he's really developed and grown, which he speaks a lot about in this conversation, to become the CEO and the business leader he is today and he knows he needs to be for the future of the company. Tell us a bit about this training Mm -hmm. that you're really passionate about. Yeah, put training to one side just for one minute. It first starts with... Enjoy this week's episode. Jamie, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. We sat down, as I was just saying, we sat down three years ago. Yeah. uh, Office in Bank, 15 people. I came to your office. Good office, that. Yeah. (laughs) Lots of memories. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, and I think... You know where you are now as a business it's it's been some journey right yeah. so would you mind just just quickly i've got some key points here but i'll just add some of the bits but you might have to help me out so when we last sat down yeah there's around 15 people office in bank um i wrote down here he was turning over around nine million um and now you're circa 100 plus people you'll be able to tell me out exactly but you've got a global presence it's you had an office in uk but you're doing a lot in europe in terms of business but yeah office in uk office in miami You've opened up New York, mm-hmm. and then I'm not sure if you have one in Amsterdam mm-hmm. or you've got a, one mm-hmm. in mainland Europe, but mm-hmm. help me out here. What are the other core bits of like what the business looks like today in terms of how many people, where you're based? Yeah, for sure. So 120 heads. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we wanted to grow with more last year, but market conditions and stuff like that, like we've done well, mm-hmm. but from a performance perspective, perspective versus like budget, mm-hmm. um, it wasn't where we wanted to be from a goal perspective, mm-hmm. but we grew we done any, everything organic um mm. so everything we've done like last year and like since we last met mm. was about doing exactly what we said we're going to do mm. and i think that's my biggest thing right is instead of me talking about it i wanted to show that it's not we try like everyone i said to in my uh interviews and i speak to is that we're going to do this mm. and i'm big about that from a mindset perspective it's that if we say we're going to do something we're going to make it happen mm. and, and we did we've, we've made stuff happen everything we've done has been organic growth you know we, we we launched miami a year and a half ago in a space of 12 months we've got our contract book running to 200k a week wow. dollars right and that's super quick mm. the first time i ever stepped in the states was when i opened up that office i actually went on a stag do <laughs> and i thought Shit, I don't know if this is the right <laughs> the right move, right? But um, no, I, I, I stuck stuck at it, and I, I love the place now. It's like mm. my my home. And then we opened up New York, so everything we've done has been organic growth. But mm. everything I've done has been at like reinvestment. Mm. Like we worked out the amount of investment from a fund perspective last year. We did was just ginormous. It was mm. huge because my strategy was that. I don't want various people doing multiple hats, okay? And playing multiple hats, sorry, because I wanted everyone to be an expert in an SME, whether it be compliance, finance, HR people, whatever that looks like. Mm. I wanted to bring the best in. I wanted to cherry pick the best in the market, bring them in to elevate us to be to where we are today. Mm-hmm. And we're in the best position possible that I could possibly be. And I'm so grateful for the position we're in now. For the next day. So, so help me understand, because I was just saying to you, when we last sat down, with where you were as a business, you literally described yourself as like a business development director. Yeah. So that's definitely not going to be the case now. So as the CEO of of this business today, like if I was to look at Jamie's like time, maybe in like a pie chart, what are like the core activities that now Jamie the CEO does? That yeah. might be quite interesting just to understand that. I, look, I'm super hands-on, okay. right? So just because I've delegated, we've created different structures and processes with people, mm. it doesn't mean that I don't want to be involved. Mm-hmm. 
I'm obsessed with being involved in this business. I love the ideas. I love driving ideas and change. I run training. I'll give you an example, right? Right right now is I'm running, I have another business around growth and mm. mindset and stuff like that. And I'm doing four sessions all about mindset with each office. So I'm flying out to each office over the next three weeks and I'm going to mm. be delivering that training. I'm involved in BD still. Mm. I love winning big clients. Our biggest client wins I've been involved in. You know, and I love being involved in it. I love my Miami team, especially, and also New York, to, to use me as the BD lead to help win that. I'm big on strategy. I'm big on direction. I'm mm -hmm. involved in a lot of things. And like my chairman was always about, you need to be on top of the business. Mm. And I do want to be on top of the business. But I run Miami last year, you know, and I've helped set up New York. Not on the infrastructure from a driving and strategy perspective, right? And... I, I would say I'm still involved in absolutely everything. Mm. You know, I'm still in early. I, I'm still leave late. I, I still, I still drive the business. I'm still hands on. Mm. You know, I have all sales leaders reporting into me globally. Mm -hmm. Not every sales leader, but like office leads and directors all reporting to me globally. Um, I've got some sales people that are reporting to me directly. These are the people that I've cherry picked that I think are absolutely phenomenal at their mm. job and I want to work with. So, I would say I'm still involved in a lot. Yeah, you know, I work very like closely with my COO. Mm -hmm. We bounce a lot of ideas off each other. Uh, we 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 both jump into each other's roles um, and work with each other quite closely. It's quite it's quite unique to be honest with you. And I I always thought that bringing someone like Amy into the business, how is that going to work? Right, she's going to take over a massive piece of my pie mm. because she controls everything operations. But it's worked like mm. so well. So I want us to talk about how we got to this point, and then what like how you're approaching going ahead because I know yeah. you've said in a few different places when I prepared for this like over the next three three and a half years you want to get to an exit mm -hmm. and some sort of business event so I think what people would be really interested in is like how we got to this point because when we last sat down 15 people now 120 people different offices COO I remember you telling me that like you sometimes thought I wish I could have started this with someone like starting on my yeah, own is really yeah. difficult right <laughs> you've now got Amy's been with you for six or so months and already having a big impact. So like, yeah, there's been a lot of growth here and I think a lot of people say they want to get to where you get to, but then maybe not get there, yeah. right? So I think that's why, I think just starting with how we got to this point, I think, why don't I just ask you firstly, what have, what have been some of the biggest shifts you've had to make as a CEO? Like yeah. when we last sat down, you described yourself different to probably how you're going to describe yourself now. So whether it be mentally or how you approach your work or where you see your purpose in interacts in your own business, yeah. what have been some of the biggest shifts you've had to make from being a 15-person company to a 120-person company? My biggest thing I say on like, interviews in recruitment and, and outside of recruitment, right, is focusing on me. Mm. I focus on me. I want it to be a better person. I want it to be happier. I want it to be more fulfilled. I, I, I wanted to create in my mindset that... Um, I'm enjoying what I'm doing. Mm. Like just work, sleep, work, sleep is not enough for me. Mm -hmm. I believe that I'm here for a bigger reason than just that. Um, and I say a lot is how can I make impact on people? Mm. So, so changing my view of just being like a sales leader, like who's just about driving sales <laughs> and, you know, bringing the sales in, which we've done very well with. Mm. And I created some absolute machines within my business. But um, I want to make impact on people's lives now. And that's the big difference. Um, I want to be clearer in my head. I want to be a lot more calm and collective in terms of how I approach things. Um, I want people to buy into me, mm. right? I, wa I want to be the CEO in the industry that people buy into. I'm young. Mm. I've achieved a heck of a lot. I've, I'm proven in my industry from a sales perspective. I believe I'm an all-rounded CEO, mm. right? Which allowed me to win my awards last year that got me to everything I needed to get to because of my change of who I wanted to be. Mm. And I created that vision and self-discovered and I understood more about me. That's allowed me to, I want to be different. I want to stand out. Mm. And like my goal for this year is I want to stand out from every CEO. Mm. What... I really notice, which I absolutely love, is just this absolute commitment of you investing in yourself. Like I think it was on one of your posts recently, and you might have mentioned it before, but I think you put on there like always work with coaches. So you put you have a coach for your business, public speaking, breath work, therapist, personal trainer, nutritionist, like that. I I, I really respect that because it can be very easy for you as you you know there's a lot of evidence to go if i just keep doing this we're going to keep making more money but yeah. you continue to get out of your comfort zone and invest in areas that you probably was aware that you needed to 
become more all-rounded and an overall yeah. better person. So, like, why why the overall commitment to that and why invest mm-hmm. in these things? Because a lot of CEOs won't. Yeah, of course. I, again, I want to stand out. I want to prove people wrong. Like, before I know, for everyone watching, right, mm. I wasn't a natural salesperson. I had a stutter. I had a lot of hardships, knockbacks and failures in my life. Um, I had low self-esteem and I created the person who I am today. Mm. And in recruitment, everyone talks about sales and learning sales. That's not how you get to elite levels. <laughs> to get to elite levels, you need to self-master, self-discover, and you need to learn about your mindset. Mm. And we'll come on to it later, right, in terms of how we elevate that with Interax. But I'm obsessed with being the best version of me. I'm obsessed of more. I'm obsessed of doing more. Like I said in one of my podcasts the other day, I'm not wasting no time this year, mm. okay? And, and it doesn't mean I'm going to be cutthroat. It's mean that I'm going to value my time and make sure I squeeze everything out of my days to ensure we maximize. And I'm I'm so obsessed of just improving. And I went to a webinar. I've never been to a webinar before in terms of like big motivational speakers. One of the best guys there said, instead of internet, research, reading, all of that stuff that takes time, go straight to the experts, mm. Pay the experts, real life examples and situations of what works, question, be coached by them, be mentored and get straight to it. And that's what I do. Mm. I want to get straight to the source of how to be a better person. And that's why I invest in myself. What What do you think as a CEO of a pretty fast growing recruitment company do you think has been has had the most impact, do you think? Because there's a f- quite a few different things there, right? You might go, it probably might not be business. It could be public speaking or a therapist. Like, what do you think, they've obviously all affected you in all different ways, but what do you think has really enabled you to perform at high levels as a CEO out of those different things you've invested Therapy. in? Therapy. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's changed my life. Like, changed my life. I'm, I'm calm. I'm collected. I think about my thoughts. I think about my actions. I think I'm happy. Like if I'm a miserable CEO all the time, then no one's going to buy into that. I want, like I said, I want to walk into rooms, interviews included. I want to inspire people and I want people to walk away and think I want to fucking work for him. Mm. That's what I want. It sounds like you just become a lot more self-aware. Yeah, for sure. And it's not like I want to be cocky or arrogant. It's that I want to be a better person. Mm. Like I'm obsessed with being a better person, right? And I've 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 done a lot of things that I've probably don't agree with with my past and stuff mm. like that. And I, I want to be an inspiring person. You know, mm. I want to prove people that anything's possible. Now, if we get into some of the like recruitment recruitment stuff, right? What I really picked up on when I was listening back to our last uh, conversation, and you also mentioned this at our live event as well. So the question I have here is like, how fundamental has it been to your growth to sell staff and products, not fill jobs? You was like really passionate about that when we sat down. You was like that, you know, you don't become elite by chasing jobs and asking if people got jobs. Yeah. Like we solve problems, we have solutions for problems. And I think that's what's like really evident, I think, whenever we've spoken is you do think about things differently or there's a lot of people speaking about productization, these things. I know you was quite early on on that, but... How fundamental has that been to your growth? And I think just to give a bit more context for people at our live event, this might have changed, but you said you you have five products to market and this is where you see you can take up even more market share from your clients. So you put uh, Teams as a service, so S-O-W, Teams as a service to hire, so contract to perm, contract services, contract to, oh, sorry, that was wrong, contract to hire is more contract to perm and then retained. So there's five different services there. Let me know if any of those are wrong and you can correct me, but how how fundamental has that been to your growth? Because that is different to doing contingent contract deals and ones and twos, right? Mm-hmm. We So we've, I've, I, we, I've, I've always trained the team um, up till since I've been leading and uh, coaching people and whatnot, is, is that we're different. Mm. We, I say, what I said to said to my team, what is the difference? You pitch in a five hundred person company to a hundred thousand person company, nothing, mm. literally nothing. Okay, it's another person behind the phone. It's a human being, right? And, it, and as soon as you can get over that hurdle and understand that, and that's why I train people. If someone asked me the other day, what makes Interest different? We p- we train people as so I p- pitch properly. Mm. It's not people don't buy into what we do. Like everyone always sells what we do: contingent recruitment. Mm. They buy into how we do it. Mm-hmm. And if we can demonstrate impact and value for our service, we've won. People pay you money, mm. right? And this is the difference between us and how we train people is consultative approach, productization, offering a service and a solution to a pain and a problem, and how we can demonstrate that, how we can make impact and value for our service. And that is sales to the next level, mm. 
right? And that that's the biggest thing for me. And I said to my whole team as a kickoff this week, we, we talk a lot about personal growth at Interex and that separates us, right? But I said, are you improving as a salesperson? Mm. And if you improve as a salesperson, like learning sales properly, technically, you outbeat everyone. And that's the same with what we do is that we want to go into products, sorry, projects and programs and identify how we can support in more of a global scale, offering a whole team as a service. Mm. And is that because of that approach, has that, mean that, has that meant that your average contract value is a lot higher? Has that enabled you to have the cash flow and you know, the resources to reinvest because when you do win a client or when you do win a project, yeah. it isn't one or two no. contractors going out each yeah. week, right? Is, yeah. is that is that been quite fundamental? We've got some huge accounts, like mm. huge accounts and like big enterprise. And we have some people that join us be like, wow, you've got some big clients here. And it's like, yeah, but what? what? Pitch them then. Like, <laughs> that's all you need to do. You train mm. people properly to pitch and mm. they pitch. And that's the biggest thing is I... Um, and we'll come on to our new training program that we've got and it's amazing in terms of our strategy to onboard people to make them absolutely great. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, for sure, like we have some big clients and I'm grateful for that and it, it, it helps with our um, quality of earnings, all of that. Mm. Like having these big brands behind us has allowed us to do a lot of things. That that was my next point. So let, let's talk about it, the training because I think whenever, when we sat down last time, you was just as passionate about it and I do I do really agree with you is like when you talk about what makes us different and I think we mentioned this last time like how many recruiters out there can effectively pitch their their services it'd be interesting to know obviously with the world that I'm in training recruiters the sort of sales element the BD element is often the biggest skill gap yeah. right so the fact that you put so much energy and passion into really equipping people with the skills to pitch properly um, is a huge competitive advantage. So I think something that really stuck out to me, and you've already mentioned it today, but what I really want for people listening to understand and put an underline under is when you talk about people buy into how, not the what, and you train people on the how, would you mind just telling us a bit about, you know, if I'm joining Interex and I'm someone who's a contract recruiter, I've done fairly well, and... I see you talking about the platform, the training. What are some of the, the things that I'm going to hear, listen, experience that's going to make me go, fucking hell, yeah. Like, I can do an extra 50% of what I was already doing because I'm now thinking about this. Tell us a bit about this training mm -hmm. that you're really passionate about. Yeah, put training to one side just for one minute. Okay. It first starts with how we motivate people okay, and the nice. type of skill set that we bring in, right? Like I said, I don't believe to be at the best level in recruitment is just about pounding that phone mm. and working smart. I believe the best way in recruitment is mastering your mindset, mm -hmm. okay, and elevating everything about your life to be the best recruiter. So that's one thing that we discuss a heck of a lot is how we personally challenge people to grow people personally. Mm. It's a big thing for me because otherwise you're not going to be completely happy. Just to be successful in recruitment does not create just mm. full happiness, right? How, how we challenge people to be better people in general is a big thing for us. Mm. So that's the first thing. The second thing, we have an inter-excellence program, right? Mm -hmm. Split into four, okay? okay? On different levels when people come in, right? Our big belief is anyone that comes in, I say to everyone in my interview, I don't care what level you are, I want you learning the inter -ex way. Mm -hmm. And that's what separated us and always separated us. You look at, you know, Trevor Pinder, right? Mm. As a big training platform we discussed mm. before. He will tell you how I work right mm -hmm. and these are people that have been involved in my business and they run training programs and stuff like that we're process driven mm -hmm. we're strategy driven we're mindset driven and we we have a clear process that's repeatable resilient and replicable mm -hmm. and my chairman discusses these three hours all the time right in terms of how we scale our business mm -hmm. and that's what people look for when they invest or they buy or whatever is do you have a resilient repeatable and repl replicable process we do mm -hmm. and we've created that this year or last year sorry but that's because of the infrastructure I've brought in. Mm. I've, I've, you look at our infrastructure team, right? We have one of the best infrastructure teams in the industry. I'm confident about that. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're, they're current. They've been in big businesses. They've scaled businesses. Other people that have exited businesses. And they want to be part of something ambitious now. Mm. Something that's that's happening right now. What is what is the talk of, of the industry? It's us. Mm. And, and it comes down to everything that we're doing. And... Any, our commitment is anyone that walks through our door, we will improve them. Mm. And I say that to everyone, seniors included. 
And, and that's a big thing for me is knowing that we reinvest into people, we make people great. And that's why we have our TA strategy to be part of the 1%. And mm. we're seriously excited about launching that. Yeah. No, I do, I do like why, I do like the fact that you said, well, before we go into all of the recruitment specific interacts way, we really need to make sure that we're trying to encourage them to be the best person exactly. they can be. I think I heard you say when I was preparing for this, like, by you really investing and being the best person you can be outside of work, yeah. that then enables you to be the best person in work. For right? sure. And I definitely agree with that. Yeah. When your mindset's right, when you've built really uh, good quality habits that just you know, enable you to be the best version of yourself, that's going to enable you to be the best version of yourself in, in work as well, not just only personally. Mm. So I think that that's great that you do that. I want to talk to you a bit about having an interex way. I think this mm. is... so. A lot of the companies that I speak to and the companies that we support are in the stage where you was at when we last sat down, yeah. so like between 15 to 30. Mm -hmm. And my sort of insight I feel like is whenever I speak to companies that find themselves, you know, going to 30, back to 20, whatever, like really struggle to get to the, the scale that you have. Yeah. I actually think one of the core reasons why is what you're talking about, having a repeatable, the three R's that you just mentioned. They don't have a process on how they pitch, how yeah. they win clients, these things. So I don't know if this is the case for all the your offices, right? But yeah. I've I saw a picture of your non negotiables in the New York office. But I don't know I don't know if this is true for this, so you have to tell me. So your non negotiables on the big banner in the New York office are the following. On phones by eight thirty AM. Yeah. Power hours standing. Always follow the process. Day plans every day. Bullhorn is the truth. Outperform other offices. Uh, come prepared and leave with actions. We pitch um, at desk, 10 before 10, don't accept underperformance. Mm -hmm. Is that like your non-negotiables across the group? You have Each to office. Out? So what, okay. what? one thing that we did, right, is we're big about culture and vision, mm. okay? Um, I'm huge about it. Like we're like, our infrastructure team are huge. Like I've got Hayley, who's our HR and people director, um, Amy, um, myself and Lisa, like, we're heavily involved in transforming our culture and vision, right? Mm -hmm. And um, we wanted each office to have their DNA. Mm. Like, who are each office? Miami, London, and New York. What are non-negotiables and what are culture? Culture, sorry. And we also done above the line and below the line. But we got everyone to participate into what that is in, in agreement with. Our New York office is about hiring, sorry, yes. experienced recruiters, mm -hmm. experienced team. Okay, and that was our goal for that. And that was that was the that was what they wanted to define collectively. Mm. And it was wise behind that. How's behind that? and reasons behind that. Um, we've done above the line and below the line and what the offices each expect, like what they think is below the line that they don't want to tolerate in the office mm -hmm. and what is above the line. And like, we love that shit, yeah. you know? And that's for New York, we've done the same for Miami. And then all of them together came into the overall global strategy and culture and vision that we have. Mm. And that's what we wanted to do is to create office visions, office cultures, office non-negotiables that all falls into the whole global strategy that we have and it it, it works mm. it's competitive okay it's setting the bar we we want to be an elite team we don't need to be a thousand people to sell for a shitload of money mm. right we need to be an elite team of people that want to win want to mm. challenge themselves in life okay and want to go to the next level and that's who we are that's mm. the platform that we offer mm. okay and i say to my team i said to my team on kickoff today you can work for a business that offer flexi hours part-time nine to five all of that shit yeah mm -hmm and do 100K a year or mm. 200K a year or come work for us, be challenged, be motivated, be inspired, be part of a vision, be part of a team and culture, be part of a business that can improve you and then come work for us. And that, that's the difference. You can put, you can choose each path. We don't want people that want to choose path A. And where there's recruiters out there that probably might see it and say, oh, you know, you can't drive a business like this. People told me that <laughs> three years ago. <laughs> yeah, there's so many people out there that are winners, like, like goal mindset, mm. all of that stuff. I want people that are hungry. I want to give people an opportunity within this business to show that they have a platform to be absolutely great. Mm. And that's what we offer. And again, we our, our TA strategy is be part of the 1%. 1% yeah. That doesn't mean that we discriminate because mm. I'll be honest with you, 90% of my team haven't gone to university, haven't gone to college, mm. haven't had a, a great upbringing. I love that. Mm. And and we want to be part of one percent because we know that there's the one percent out there, and we want to tr we want to show people how you could be part of the one percent in the recruitment industry. Yeah, it's about. No, I totally get that in terms of 
you want people that generally want big things for themselves. 100%. And they want to be challenged. Not everyone wants to be challenged. Um, That's my biggest fulfillment, right? Mm. Is knowing that we can make people change their lives. Mm. Like I've seen so many people start with a certain work attire and they finish the year on a certain work attire. That just shows the difference of, mm. of, of transformation they've been through, their happiness that they've been through, the promotion they've been through, the pay packet they've been through, like everything. Mm. And watching that transformation journey is something my whole leadership team buy into. Mm. We'll get back to the episode in just one minute, but today I wanted to tell you about our partners, Sourcewell the industry leading biz development and headhunting platform. I'm a Sourcewell user myself, and it's been an absolute game changer when it comes to crafting personalized outreach. It's not only quick and easy, but you can tap into custom variables, automate follow-ups, and use multiple channels like the phone, LinkedIn, email, and more to accelerate results. Users report an average increase of 56% in qualified response rates, and when you're using it, it's easy to see why. AI-powered tools like Content Coach and Whale GPT improve your chances of not ending up in spam, something that's become increasingly challenging with Google's recent deliverability changes. It also tracks all of your activity into your CRM, keeps your data clean, and lets you know who you need to reach out to and when, so you can spend more time on what you're good at, recruiting, not admin. So if you're serious about being the best at what you do, join me and thousands of recruiters who have chosen Sourcewell to revolutionize their outreach approach. Book a demo with Sourcewell and mention the Recruitment Mentors podcast to enjoy an extra 50 phone and 50 email credits per user. And this exclusive offer will save you circa 500 pounds and more. And it's only available until March the 31st. Click the link in the episode description or you can head to sourcewell.com forward slash demo. You speak, you mentioned it quite a bit at the live event as well. And I think it'd be just good to hear how, like break it down a bit in terms of you describe your business as a platform and you're yeah. really passionate about this platform. We're talking about it in different ways here. But just just share with us, I don't, I, if I'm honest, I've had a lot of these conversations. Mm -hmm. I don't think as many people use that word as, as you do. Mm -hmm. And it, it makes sense to me why, because what we're talking about, you can join the Interex platform and this is then where we can, yeah. we can take you. We're talking about the non-negotiables, challenging people, uh, the things that you invest in. But like, what what are the the pillars of this platform? The way that you see it, because I think that would be interesting for people to understand how you think about this platform. Because you always use that word. Yeah. Um, first, it's uh, for us to say that we've got a platform. It's got to be proven, right? Mm. Um, you've interviewed some of my team. You know the sort of numbers that some of my team. Like my my company are known to do big numbers. Mm -hmm. I know that. Right, everyone I speak to, the the the, the messages that I get, everyone knows my company do big numbers. Mm -hmm. As individual consultants, like our average senior does over twelve and a half, thirteen k a week, mm -hmm. average. That's average. I've got people scaling up to sometimes even seventy k a week. Mm -hmm. Like that's record breaking industry stuff. Mm. And so it first starts with proof, like we can actually do that. And also just on that, it doesn't matter how old you are. Some people, I used to get knocked back on my age and stuff like that. It doesn't matter how old you are, you can you can do these numbers if you put your mind to it. The next thing is the culture that we've created. Like my, my HR and people director and Amy and Lisa and all, all of our infrastructure team have worked seriously hard on defining who we are this year. Mm -hmm. Building a platform that's giving back, building a platform that's supportive, that, that, that really, really elevates people. Like that's huge for me. Like people engagement was the num number one topic for last year is mm -hmm. making it the best people engagement platform possible where people can be happy, fulfilled and want to come to work yeah you know and that's a big thing for me and then so many people and i said to my all of my teams in each office as a kickoff we went through the non-negotiables the culture and i said you need to feel this you need to believe in it you need to be part of it because this is what you set it wasn't what i set mm. but you need to be part of that vision of what you want to do because otherwise you're not going to back the office you're not going to be happy and you're not going to want to win mm. we all need to work collaboratively to make this happen as a team and that's what we've done so well is bringing people together as a team. My, my, my leadership team are phenomenal, I believe. I believe we've created a super, super, super good senior leadership team, which has helped us to, 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 to structure us into the position that we're in today. Mm -hmm. um, and we train people right. Mm -hmm. I'm just going back to the training, the platform is the, it's the, the training. And anyone that's come through our training will know that we train people properly how to do recruitment. Mm. And that sounds weird, like properly how to do recruitment, right? <laughs> but, um, but yeah. A lot of people don't. That, that's just the honest truth. Um, 
you've mentioned it a few times. Let, let's really make sure that we understand this because I, I do think this has been, from outside looking in, one of the, the big growth areas in terms of the the infrastructure that you've built. Yeah. Because there's no way you're going to get to the plans that you have in yeah. terms of grow by another 150 sales staff uh, globally in 2024, get to this business exit, this business event in three and three and a half years. There's no way you're going to do that um, without unbelievable infrastructure and unbelievable yeah. people um, in great seats. So would you mind just talking to us a bit about how how you've gone about that and how you thought about it? What I'm yeah. asking you is, like, what what you might have got help with this, but like, what did you see to be when we think about this world class infrastructure? What were some of the types of seats that you need to invest in first? Was it an ops person? Was it train a training person? Like, how did you visualize this um, infrastructure and the, yeah. the ops team? Would you yeah. mind sharing that? So I, I believe I. Like I've made mistakes mm-hmm. in hiring. I've made mistakes in growing. I've, got, I've made mistakes in all, all areas of my life, right? With the business and outside of business. But some of my mistakes that I kept on making was hiring people that just, I, that I wanted to believe that they could step into the role. Right. Okay. And I'm too ambitious for that. And like, I'd love for that to happen. I'm too fast paced. I'm too ambitious. I'm too hungry to wait for someone. Okay. It's simple as that. So my strategy was then I want to hire the best people. And I want to go out there and I want to reinvest and just get the best people. So just to clarify, sorry, one of the learnings was you were maybe finding yourself investing like potential. They might not have got a full track record. It wasn't of ready being... enough. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. They they couldn't live up to my expectation. Okay. And it doesn't mean I was just a harsh bastard. It was mm. just more of that I have a goal, mm. I have a vision. If you can't work at this pace, yeah, then it doesn't work. Okay. You know? And I've had that. And um, and like. This might work with other companies, Mm. but I know where I want to go. You know, I'm 30 years old and I've achieved all of this in my life and I know I want to exit this business Mm. and I want to do it younger and quicker than anyone. Mm. I can't do that with people that are balls and change. And my my chairman is very good with this and he reminds me of who I am and who we want to be and what we want to do and where we want to go. And um, I just said, I want to get the best people now. Mm. I want to make sure I get in front of people and I want to win people over. So I worked on me first because mm-hmm. I needed to make sure that people could buy into what I, my story and what I wanted to do. Because, you know, when, as, I was, um, as I was developing as a CEO, I had people, you know, feedback on interviews. And sometimes it was good, sometimes it was bad. It's 50-50. I'm now 95%. If I get in front of someone, I've won them over. Mm. I'm confident about that because I believe that people want to work for someone like myself because I want to go places. I'm not a talker. Mm. Like, I want to go and do things, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm obsessed with doing things and I want to make people great. So I just went and got, went and got the right people. Um, I hired the right people. I, you know, I, I, I brought in, um, well, my, my finance, my finance leaders have never worked out. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair. Yeah. So appreciate that's always been a problem for that's me, but I've got a oh, big, big challenge, but I've got a great FD now. Yeah. I've got, um, a great, uh, Contracts and Compliance Director, mm-hmm. HR and People Director. So I've got Rob, Stuart, Haley. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got Amy, our COO. Mm. I've got Lisa, who's our EVP for growth. Okay. I've got Virginia, who heads up our marketing globally. So mm-hmm. I've built a phenomenal team, mm-hmm. like phenomenal team. And um, these are all people that have been there and done it. Yeah. That are collaborative. They're still, they're still hungry people though, right? Yeah, yeah. Is there... Just thinking for people listening that are on the scaling journey, just quickly, um, what would you say is really, what would you invest in first if I'm going on a scaling journey um, in terms of like on the infrastructure side? Is it an ops person? Is it finance? If you're a sales leader, bring in an ops, bring in a good ops person yeah. for sure. So, sooner rather than later. Yeah, and yeah. And everything, you can build everything around Of course, that. you can focus more, right? Yeah. I'm not saying I, I, I do focus for sure. Like Amy mm. is a workhorse. <laughs> but she... Um, I work well with her, and I, um, the the partnership's great. But I have a good partnership with all of my senior yeah, leadership yeah, team. I work with all of them. I work very close with Lisa because she she drives our operations in the US. So I work great with all of them, right? And um, I think he's, he's cr- I'm, I'm fortunate. Like, mm. I'm very grateful and fortunate. But do you know what my advice is? Is stop being so tight and put your hand in your pocket. Yeah. And that's biggest. Everyone's biggest problem. Oh, I want one person to do three roles. Not salespeople. Just like yeah. just just. And I, I'm not afraid of spending a bit of money, right? Mm. And because I, I want to be the best like if you're not going to take risks and you're not going to take some step backs mm. to go 10 steps forward then you're not an entrepreneur mm. an entrepreneur is take risks mm. scales a business wants to wants to grow something wants to sell something but and that, that's my biggest thing is people crit- comment on profit I don't care about my fucking profit mm. 
you know I, I care about the, the 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 success of this business and how how this business is so great and we invested so much money last year and I, b- I believe in it I back it and look at the position we're in now so what I really like about what you shared there was again like you doing the self-work of maybe realizing that maybe I could be coming across a bit better in these interviews or perform better in interviews. And that's going to be absolutely crucial if I'm going to be able to hire people like Amy, for example, um, in these seats. So one of the one of the points here, I don't know what else you want to add to this, but I think as you've gone on this journey, uh, you've really had to change the culture in the right way with growth. Yeah. So diversified your workforce. Everything. You know, naturally it's it's matured. I think when yeah. we sat down, I think I remember you saying that age the people in your business were like eighteen to twenty six. Yeah, we're all, like all, <laughs> all standing on the tables, calling. That's what I mean. Ties so like on our heads. You, so you've had to, no. you know, as you've gone on this journey and you continue. Yeah. Um, you've had to, quote unquote, mature right. Different age groups, New York offices, many experienced recruiters, senior yeah. leadership team. There's a lot of female presence. These things. So, talk to us a bit about that journey and how you've gone about that. Obviously, you've spoken about the infrastructure, but how important has that been? For sure. Um, I, I had a big thing for last year is that I wanted. To, we just want to be a better business. Mm. We want to be more diverse. Um, we want to look. I'm not. I, I won't just hire someone just because of their age. I, I'm not looking to do that, right? But we have matured naturally. We've matured, but we have matured with the right people. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not just going to hire a 40, 50 year old just because I need more age in my business. Yeah. Like that's not for me at all. But we've got 50% of our, our leadership are female. Mm-hmm. Like that's huge. Mm-hmm. I think even a bit more than that. We've got language speakers now. My my new director in Europe is, uh, which was from Belgium, we re- relocated her over. We've now got a sponsorship license for Europe where we can bring on anyone across Europe into the UK. Um, our New York office was all about experience hires. You look at my New York team, it's super strong. Mm-hmm. Um, we've done a lot. We've done a heck of a lot. My Miami team is is a very, very much a diverse office, if you can say that, but it's a great team. Mm-hmm. My Miami culture, and look, I'm gonna be biased because I run that office, mm-hmm. so I did run that office, is such a, a prime example of who you wanna be. Mm. Like fast pace, collaborative, people from all walks of life come in mm. and everyone wants to, wants one goal and has to be successful. I've had enough of people saying UK is different to US. Yes, it is slightly. But there's winners everywhere in the world. Mm. Literally. <laughs> Literally everywhere. And this is the thing is that um we've had to adapt, we've had to evolve because of the business we are today. Like if I didn't have some of my leaders in senior leadership now as females, we probably wouldn't have hired some of our people, right? Yeah. We've got uh, like female directors everywhere from a sales perspective and non-sales. And it's, again, like I'm very fortunate to have these people and these are winners. These are people that have an intention to be great, intention to sell, intention to be successful. Like we have a very much so unified leadership team of where we want to go as a business. And it's, it's, I think it's rare. Let me ask you this then. What do you think people outside looking into interests often get wrong? when judging what it might be like to work for your business? They get me wrong. Mm. I think because um, I used to get a lot of feedback. So all of my senior leadership team got told not to work for me by multiple Really? People. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. I get they to, told I, you that? All the, yeah, yeah, all the time. All the time I get people to say... So, Before they joined you, yeah, they I've said, had, Pff, not sure I'd work for Jamie. Lots of people have said, don't work for Jamie, okay? Yeah. I've had stories where people said, oh, I used to chuck chairs at people, <laughs> or chuck phones at people. I never knew that. <laughs> so maybe it might be someone's dream, but I don't know. But everyone that does work for me, and I'm not being arrogant or cocky, will tell you how I am. Mm. I'm caring. I give back. I'm positive. Mm-hmm. I back my team to the absolute fullest. It's my team against everyone. Okay. And I lead. Mm. I lead from the front, right? People, I, I don't I don't have people join me that quit. Mm. Okay. And I think that says a lot about me. Mm-hmm. People might have this perception about me. It's jealousy. Okay, beat my track record. Mm. I won two Entrepreneur of the Year's, an Entrepreneur of the yep. Year awards last year. Okay, no one's ever done that. Mm-hmm. Great Britain and the recruitment industry. Okay, I believe it's jealousy. I believe it's people can see that I'm going places. But if you look at my team, they'll tell you the type of leader I really am. Mm. Um, and that's all that matters. Of, that's all I care about. Yeah. Now it's all I care about because now it's about 
okay, you can criticize me, but you can't criticize where my business is going. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the big difference. And that's why I said to you about the self-aware, the self-analyze, mm. the self-discovery and stuff like that. I'd done that because I wanted to be a better person. Yeah. And yeah, I might have done some shitty things in the past. We all have. Exactly. We'll get back to the episode in just one minute, but today I'm excited to talk to you about one of our partners, Firefish, the recruitment CRM that accelerates data-driven growth. They have just released their 2024 recruitment agency report. Based on insights from over 200 agency leaders, the report offers unbelievable insights into forecasts for the year ahead, enabling you to refine your strategy based on data rather than intuition. Here are some of the stats I personally found interesting from the report. Although industry optimism has declined for the third year in a row, growth signals remain positive with 84% of agency leaders expecting year-on-year sales growth this year. 47% of agency leaders plan to use a contingency recruitment model in 2024, and 70% of agencies plan to use social sourcing as their main candidate attraction strategy in 2024. You can access your free copy of the report and start making data-driven decisions about your business by clicking the link in the show notes. And whilst you're there, if you wanted to check out how Firefish could help your business grow this year, they very kindly offered a unique offer to our community, the Recruitment Mentors podcast, that's going to save you up to £1,000. And this offer is only available until March the 31st. You can click the link in the episode description and you can also head to firefishsoftware.com forward slash RMP. This brings me quite a nice point on, I read your post on turning 30 and then you like wrote a bunch of, a list of things. I think the perfect point, I only wrote two down, um, which I really liked. Uh, first one, some someone that talks about you and never be in front of you. I think that's quite on point for this. And I wanted to ask you, because I think it's, it is evident you've been on this personal growth uh, journey, but I wanted to ask you that in terms of where you think people often... Um, go wrong so I found that interesting but yeah so I think that's a really good manager to live by like someone that if you put too much weight on what other people are telling about you mm-hmm. you don't really gain anything from that but remembering that you know these people that do talk about you will never be in front of you you're I, on your own journey my chairman said that to me really I yeah. love that I think I think that's mega yeah Some, someone that will talk about you will never be in front of you I think that's that's a great that's a great insight um tell tell us about a lot of actually yeah, maybe more people talk about wanting to get to some sort of exit um, and very few people do. Yeah. So what I'd love to get your uh, take on is, just to get a bit technical here, from what you understand and have learned so far on this journey working with people like um, Dean, your chairman, like to get to this business event, what is what is going to be the biggest contributor to enterprise value? Like what, mm-hmm. you know, looking at your business or when you think about your business in three, three and a half years time, mm-hmm. what are going to be the most valuable parts of it? Because mm-hmm. it can't be Jamie driving the business. No. So like, you know, is it, it tell us a bit about that. Yeah. I think that would be some good insights for people. So my obviously my chairman has been brought in for various reasons. His experience, I work with him, I work closely with him, I work well with him. And he doesn't work with lots of companies, which mm. is something I'm grateful for because he believes in what we want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, he talks about quality of earnings a lot. And this this is a guy that has sold multiple businesses. He's bought and sold and bought again, you know. Mm. So I wanted to bring him in because I want experience. So first of all, he's bringing in a good chairman. Mm-hmm. I think it's the first thing. Second thing is the quality of earnings, right? So that means big relationships, which we've got. So we like with like clients, with like enterprise yeah. clients and stuff. We're ninety percent contract now. Yeah. So you've always been very contract heavy. Yeah. You? So yeah. there's recurring revenue there. Yeah. We're building a brand called Enigma, mm-hmm. which is all about pure SOW, and we've got people at latter stages of interview, and we're going to really elevate that this year. Um, and why does that help the value? Is it because the types of SOW business? people? So, um, so when more you go for a tr- yeah. Okay. SOW, the multiplier goes straight through the roof, and it's something I'm super excited and I'm, I'm passionate about. What, why does it go up? Is it because the contract values are much higher? Is it because it's a lot more stickier? Yeah, it's consultancy, it's contract values, it's, it's, it's everything to okay. do with that. Like, I, I, having that as an add-on to, to the business shows that you're offering more than just, it's a service yeah, at the end cool. of the day. Um, repeatable, resilient, re- replicable yeah. processes, yeah, like the template. Yeah, so if we can show to someone who buys us mm. that this box of interacts of who we are, the process, the way of working, if we open up Austin, which is our next office that we're going to open, mm-hmm. if it opens and it goes like that and it's successful. It's repeatable. Exactly. And that they're the, they're the biggest things that we're looking at right now. That, and how, just de-risking the business a little bit. Yeah. But 
we're on a trajectory to do all of this. Like mm. if you look at everything I've said now, everything's in process. Mm. Like we're, we're, our eyes are on the goal now. Mm. You know, we've just created a 20, like we don't have a 2024 plan. Our, our plan is 2024 to 2026. That's our plan. Mm -hmm. And we have our eyes on exactly what we need to do now. And it's tunnel vision to make it happen. And how do you fit in? Because mm -hmm. I think sometimes from, you know, I have friends who are in, senior positions and businesses that talk about we're going to sell one day and these things but what I hear time and time again is it can be difficult for these people to be less hands-on yeah you said how much you're involved because you enjoy it and how you're passionate about it but from what I understand if me and you have a meeting and I'm talking to you about potentially buying Interex or you know buying you out for example I'm not going to be excited if I find that if we take Jamie out a lot of this drive and performance isn't going to be there mm -hmm. so if you get if you achieve all those things what does your role look like towards the end of that because i think that would be interesting for people to understand is it that you're less and less hands on like how do you fit into that yeah we uh, obviously we've naturally got to pull me away from a lot of yeah. these things the goal by the end of 2024 is and i said to all my leadership you make me redundant in your success mm. how do you feel about that great <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes people cuz like that's We'll go on to like the other things that you have, and maybe this helps, but if you didn't have anything else going on, other in initiatives that you're really passionate about, that's your purpose potentially taken away. Of course, but, and I say it before, success does not determine by the money you earn, it determines by the impact you make on people. Mm. And my goal this year is to impact people yeah. big time. And um, I want to delegate properly, we've got a strategy to do that. Don't get me wrong, I, I've thought hard about this, right? And mm. I think that when I opened up New York, I emailed um, Amy mm. and I said, oh, do I need to be here really? Because I feel like I'm a, I'm a little bit bored because it's like the first <laughs> week. I was like, I don't feel like, because Amy Amy and Lisa dealt with it, right? They, they, just, cracked, got, on, they yeah. just cracked on and got it all done. I was like, oh. So it's, it's working. It's, it's, it's a change of my mindset, right? Mm. But don't get wrong. I, I don't want to work part-time, mm. right? I always want to be involved in the business. I think my biggest thing is, can I focus on other things that can elevate this business? Ideas, strategy. Like, I'm always in the business. Oh, different brands, for example. Yeah. yeah. I'm always in the business. I need to be more on top of the business. And this year is about being on top. And I said to all my senior leaders, this year, I said, you make me redundant in your success. Mm. I love that. And that's so important for people to hear. Because if you're in a recruitment business right now and they've dangled the carrot in front of you saying, yeah. we're, we're going to exit, but still they try and just have their hands on everything it's going to be very difficult to of sell that, that business, yeah. right? So if I if you're telling me you're like, you know, you need to make me redundant in your success, like that's what you want to hear. If the big goal is I'm going to be part of this journey, I'm going to hopefully get shares in this business by performing and doing what I need to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be rewarded for that when, you know, however it works, Jamie being bought out or whatever, however it works, right, in terms of who's going to be at the table. But if you're not hearing that in the business where they're dangling that carrot in front of you, that that's a red flag for me. And I yeah. always say that to people because, you know, it sounds great to say like, yeah, Jamie, we're going to give you shares in our business, but that means fuck all unless anything yeah. happens, right? But people know that I mean business. Yeah. You know, I'm serious about everything. I don't bullshit no one. And, you know, I'm very black and white and some people love it, some people don't, I don't care. Like, mm. you get what you see with me. And if I say something's going to happen, it's going to happen. So tell us about, it's been interesting to see this outside looking in. So we've mentioned Enigma, which you're excited about in terms of going to continue to elevate the enterprise value of Interax as a whole. How does JFG fit into all of this then? Yeah. So I, as I said, I have a passion for impacting people. I've gone through a transformation journey in my head. That's, and I say like when I speak at events and podcasts, I shouldn't be in the position I'm in today on paper. Mm. With everything that's happened in my life, I shouldn't be where I am today, but I, I have. And I've done it through working with the right people, my mindset and stuff like that. So I'm creating a coaching and 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 training platform to take people that have come from adversity and all of that stuff to train them how to get their mindset right, whether it be consistency, habits, routines, goals, whatever that looks like, big process around the mindset to then sell to anyone, mm. but then to brand to anyone. People are forgetting branding. Branding is the biggest thing for any successful business and it's something that I'm going to be driving hugely this year with my brand personally mm -hmm. and with Interex. So... And creating a platform effectively, like I don't think there's a good enough platform. You've got Grant Cardone for sales mm. out there. You've got these, but there, there is a new generation coming through now. For sure. And I'm going to make that happen. And that's my goal is to have the number one transformation journey globally. I love that. Yeah. I'm 
And how's it going so far? Uh, first eight weeks, um, I tested the water. It didn't go to my plan I wanted. Mm -hmm. I've evaluated, I've looked, I've evaluated even further. And the lot in December, sales have just been going up and up and up and up and up. Mm. And I haven't even started. I so even you just really it. like the idea of just helping I want to your, younger self, your younger yeah. self. I want to change lives. And I have people approach me all over the world. Uh, contact me on Instagram. I've got a very big following on Instagram. I've got a lot of people that speak to me, follow me. And the difference between myself and a lot of these other coaches out there, I'm proven. I've been there and done Track it. Record, I've done it young. Because yeah. that is the thing online, isn't it? I'm of sure course. when you've done your research. Yeah, yeah. It's easy. It, you've really got to check where you're getting your information 100%. and advice from. 100%. And I think really you want to gravitate towards, it's like why you've invested in your chairman and the people, like they've got a track record and it's very easy to share things online yeah. and take in from things from people that haven't got that track record. 100%. Um, so paint a picture for us then. We sat down three years ago. Yeah. <laughs> You're here now. We've spoken a bit about, you know, getting, driving towards this business event. You've got some big growth plans this year right so yeah. i've said looking to hire about 150 sales staff you've mentioned austin like i'd really if we had sat down another three years mm. what conversation are we having yeah what, what are things going to look like i've got offers on the table that we're looking at that we're evaluating that we're digesting I, i'm happy mm. my team are happy my team are motivated my team are eager to get this done you'd see a business that we, we've like We've got one of the best brands on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. best growth on LinkedIn. Like we just, I want Interest to be the best brand. I believe last year we really stood out from a lot of our competition and in the recruitment industry, and we're not even the biggest. In the next three years, I want to be the best recruitment company to ever be sold. That's my goal. And one of my biggest things is someone said to me the other day, we're, so we're looking to acquire businesses, right? Yeah, I saw that. So if like anyone watching that wants to be acquired, <laughs> wants to be part of our group and processes and stuff like that and wants to... What's well, uh, so the idea behind that? Is that obviously very strategic? Strategic in terms of the fact of we want to grow faster and we believe yeah. we've got the right structure to take on our business. And we, we've got three companies we're speaking to and these three companies are 20 to 50 person yeah. companies. And our proposition to them is that you will sell for more through us. Under the, yeah, under the entire group. Yeah. The because enterprise value will increase. Uh, my infrastructure team is ready for a lot of people. Mm. And that's the big thing. So we're ready to take on companies. But um, I, 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 went, I was speaking to a business owner and he said, oh, you know, I went to get investment. Um, and they said, oh, you know, you own 100%. I'd recommend you give shares out to the business. And I said, wait a minute. I said, I give shares out to a lot of people. At my Christmas party, I said, S3 made all of these millionaires. Yeah. I want to do the same. Mm. I want to make multiple millionaires in this business. This business is not just about me and earning a shitload of money. I know I earn money in my life. Mm. But I want to like, be about impact on people and change people's lives. And people know working for me, they'll get a piece of the pie and I don't dangle carrots. So ju just one or two things. Firstly, just on that, I think it'd be curious to know how how do you incentivize becoming a shareholder? Like, yeah. how does that work? Is it done on performance? Like, I'm sure it'd be different ways, but typically, if I join your business, how could I become a shareholder? How have you thought about that? Yeah, client. it starts a client manager. So one of above a principal, you go to client manager or you go from a manager up, or anything manager upwards, basically, BD and... Gives management. you the right to get sh yeah. uh, access shares. You in, get interact. you start and it, it goes it phases up to C suite. Nice. Yeah. So everyone gets a piece quite quite early on in their career. Yeah. Sure. And is it is it done then on is it done on performance or is nope. it just done, obviously if you're you getting hit. to that point you're progressing and exactly. you're performing. If you hit that you 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 it's achieve done on it. promotion. We made four more people shareholders this year. That's unreal. Yeah. That for good? Christmas. Yeah, it's amazing. Like they're over the moon. Like mm. I've I've got people that are have been with me for a long time, and it, the time was right to start giving mm. the shares back to these people. And like that, I, I'm not a selfish person. Mm. Like I, it, was, it pissed me off when this guy was like, "Oh, you should go and do this." No, you've done that wrong. <laughs> I, like we're we're doing that, and you know I'm big about that. I'm not. I'm, like I said, like if you speak to my senior leaders and my people that work directly, I care. I give back and I give a shit. Yeah, and I guarantee you as well. Uh, obviously, you're not doing it just for this reason, but like when you get to that moment. Are you going to remember the millionaires that you made and the impact that you made, or are you going to remember what you felt like when you saw the money in your bank account? I'm pretty sure it's going to be no, it's impact on people. Yeah, that's, that's what you remember the most. Like that's true what... success is impact on people. Yeah, uh, it doesn't matter how much you earn. That's not successful. Mm. Successful is the impact that you replicate to other people. Mm. That's great that you've made it 
I'm assuming that's like super vis- visible and easy to understand. And t- I think that's the most important thing with stuff like that is it's just completely transparent. If you get here, this is how many shares you get. If you get yeah. here, this is how many shares you get. So that's great. You've made that really clear. And I like one of the other things that we're going to start doing is doing a shareholders meeting every quarter to discuss the strategy and just nice. so, so, so also influence. Exactly. Like, yeah. We want good. everyone to be part of the vision that we go through and it's culture, it's vision. And that's why the people we have involved are all thinking the same way, mm. you know, and that is, it's, it's huge for me. And that, that's what separates us. We've got a great culture, we collaborate, we incentivize, and we drive the business in the right way. Mm. The other thing I just wanted to make sure I asked you, because it'd be interesting to get your take, because how long have you been open to the idea of acquiring and rolling in great companies under Interact Group? Has that been over the last 12 months? Q4. Q4, so fairly recent. Yeah. What, um, my question is, like, what is it that you really look for that makes you feel like this company has potential because again i think people's perception of that could be different like i'm sure you've met people that that go into the conversation going my business is jamie should be very interested in my business and you speak to them like yeah not not sure this is actually up to mark so what what are like the core things that you are always trying to identify and look for mm-hmm. when you've started to have these conversations they've got good relationships and they're not just 180 doing delivery they actually bd mm. pick up the phone and they want to be better Mm-hmm. Um, to be honest with you, there's some companies out there that are just complete 180 model and it's just like, couldn't be anything worse. In the sense that they have some big house accounts and they just deliver. And that's it, and that's why they're not growing. That's right. why they're not developing because they don't have BD people. Mm. It's different to be honest, like we're BD through and through, right? Yeah. We train people to be BD machines mm. and like that, that's what's got us through hard times, COVID mm. included. Mm. And last year, you know, last year was a tough year for everyone, for including people, us. Yeah. Um, and our BD techniques and strategies obviously elevated by 5, 10, 15%, right? Mm. Um, but we're looking for people that have got good relationships, BD, entrepreneurial mindset, and we want people that, that want to be part of something special, mm. like have the sort of same ambition as us. But just, I think we want to take over people that don't have the infrastructure, that don't have the vision, the direction. So that's a huge value add that you can give them. Massive, massive. Yeah, and oftentimes if they're at the sort of type of size that... yeah. I've done speaking it. To. Like, yeah. I've been there and done it. It's fucking hard. And that'd be a big pain for them. Yeah, oh, for sure. It's, it's so, so hard. To go from 50 to 100 people is the hardest. Like, I, I haven't seen going from 100 to 200 yet, but going from 50 to 100, wow. Because mm. culture, you've got to think of everything. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. One bad problem affects multiple people and the mm. list goes on. It's, it's hard. Yeah. That's exciting then that maybe there might be one or two brands that are part of this journey yeah. then with you. Yeah, yeah for Does sure. Does that excite you as well? Very. Very, it's, it's, and w- I, I'm proud about. Like, I want to be top co. Mm. Always want to be top company. Like without, yeah. I don't ever sell to a recruitment group because it's you don't leave a. Le- I want to leave, leave a legacy, right? And mm. it's like, big for me. Um, it's big for my team as well. My, my team want to sell Interex. Is that that's interesting? You think that because there's been that the you know from like recent yeah. um, acquisitions, it's been like bigger. Like Investigo, for example, I know that um, Ashley quite well, Investigo acquiring Biotalent, that's like a bigger recruitment group buying. You don't like the idea of that? No, 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 <laughs> no way. Who do you visualise? I'm sure you've, you have to think about this, right? What what sort of um, tables you want to be at that would, in terms of that would fit the type of um, vehicle to buy in Trex? Is it more of a PE firm? Yeah, or is 100% it? PE, yeah. I think. Like, I've had I've had a couple offers already, right? Mm. Um Last year, I had an offer, and the year mm. before that, I had an offer. And um, these are from big P back companies. One's an American based company, but it's not it's not enough. Like, I need to be fulfilled. Like, if I sell now for 50 million, it's not enough. Mm. It's not enough for my t- myself or my team. My team would the be team, yeah. pissed off as well. <laughs> <laughs> do you ve- would it be again, it might, might, might not be something that you've thought about, but do you see it being like you would be completely they would just buy the entire company? And I don't know. It so, depends, I, yeah, that's. Oh, I'm every day. I'm learning. Yeah. So I've never, I've never had a company this size, and I've dealt with money this size, and I've dealt with anything, anything this size. Can you move closer to the yeah. mic again? Yeah. I've never dealt with anything this size. Yeah. So every, every everything I'm doing is learning yeah. now, and this is the thing. If I'm learning, I don't know what three years is going to look like. Mm. It's exciting though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> what? Um, just final note, like what? You take growth really seriously, personally. What are some of the things that you'd really like to continue growing on over the next couple of years? So when we next sit down, sit down. What what are some of the things personally you'd really like to? Yeah. 
grow and become even better at. Yeah. So I want to be the number one motivational speaker in the UK in the next. Really? Yeah, yeah. Big about that. So I've got a public speaking coach, right? Um, and for someone that had a stutter to now now, I would just want to show people that anything's possible. So mm. I want to be the number one public speaking coach in the UK, but I want to conquer the US market. It's a big thing for me. Mm. Um I want to. I want to just be more. I want to be more and more and more clear about me mm. as a person, my mindset, how to master it. I believe that I've kind of mastered my mindset, and I'm a bit of a freak when it comes down to like what I want, how I want it, and my work ethic and all of that. But I want. I want to elevate. Mm. Like I said, I. I believe I'm here for more than just work, eat sleep work eat sleep i'm here for more than that. i want to impact people right so mm -hmm. how i can elevate that more isn't just about recruitment anymore for me it's about like the, the the wider impact that i can make across the community and world in general and that's that's the sort of stuff that gives me a thrill mm. like excites Find me gets up. me out of bed yeah for sure like for sure and that's why i've got this new business because i know i can make so much impact on people and like all these other old sales trainers and and stuff like that people that sold big stuff I know I can do it better than them. And mm. that's that's my mindset. Mm. And I've got a great team around me to allow us to do that. I think it's super important for young men today to have more role models, right, and access to people that can help them fulfill their potential and help them feel like they can do more. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and female. And female. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Jamie, look, it's been an absolute pleasure. I, I've loved to see your, um, I've, honestly, outside looking in, I've loved, to, loved seeing your growth. Um, I just really respect you making the real investment in yourself um i think that says a lot um about you and um what you're about and yeah have no doubt at all we'll be sitting down another three years time and we <laughs> you know at the appropriate time be talking about the tale of of selling interest let's get this going <laughs> <laughs> thanks for having me i appreciate Bye, it